welcome to Barnes Takeout, your daily serving of art. My colleagues and I are going to be doing daily um, talks about some of our favorite works um, from the collection. So tune in every day on YouTube. Um, we're going to be doing this every day until our building reopens. I am talking to you right now from my house in Philadelphia. Um, and we, we miss the collection and we think that this is a good way to visit it. And also it's just kind of nice to think about something other than all the craziness that's going on in the world right now. Today I'm going to be talking about Van Gogh's Postman, um, painted in 1889. This was one of the first paintings that Albert Barnes purchased and it's really one of the icons of our collection. Um, I'm a little bit, you know, the reason that I chose this one today to talk about is that um, I'm a little bit obsessed with Van Gogh at the moment. Um, and I have to, I have to confess that Van Gogh is not an artist that has always interested me. Um, which is kind of strange because my 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 area of study as an art historian is is late late 19th century Europe. So to not have really looked closely at Van Gogh is 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 kind of is kind of strange, but I think that it was that I had seen him so many times in reproduction that I just I didn't I don't know, I just thought that there wasn't much to look at or something. But um, I think it was being at the barns and being, you know, in this working in this collection where we've got this, this beautiful collection of Van Goghs, there are seven, um, and, and being able to get up close to them and see the brushwork and just what an amazing painter he was and um, to learn more about his life. Um, I, I think he's one of the more interesting artists, and I, obviously I'm not alone in thinking this. I'm just kind of a little bit late to the party. Um, so he is one of those artists who has this incredible life story, you know, very sad one, um, but also sort of very romantic in that he, he suffered for his art. He was the kind of quintessential bohemian artist who gave up everything for his art. Um, this picture in partic particular has such a uh, humanity to it, uh, which, which is another reason that I chose it. Um, there, to me, it's a picture that's about human interaction. And yesterday I talked about another picture that was about human interaction and it was a Renoir showing people having lunch. Obviously, there is only one person in this painting, and so the interaction that I'm talking about is is that between the painter and the sitter. It's one where you can really feel that connection between artist and subject. You can really feel that Van Gogh is in the room, um, and that and that um, there's um, there's just a sort of energy between them. The subject here, so this man is named Joseph Roulin. He was a postman who lived in the town of Arles in the south of France in the Provence region. And he had a job unloading the mail at the railway station in Arles. He actually, he, he lived near the, the train station as well, as did Van Gogh. So they were neighbors and there was a cafe in the neighborhood called the Café de la Gare, which means the, the train station cafe. And it was kind of a seedy place, um, but Van Gogh went there and he met Roulin and they became friends and drinking buddies and they had, they had a lot in common. They shared similar um, political views. They became very close, really close friends. Van Gogh became good friends with his with Roulin's whole family, um, his wife and children, and uh, he painted all of them several times. He painted the children, he painted the wife, he painted six portraits of Joseph Roulin, the postman, and it was also Roulin who cared for Van Gogh 
after he had after that horrible incident where he cut off part of his ear it was Roulin who 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 called the police and and got him to the hospital and who checked in on him when he when he was at the hospital and so it's very likely that uh, one theory is that van gogh painted this for Roulin as a as a gift after he got out of the hospital in early 1889, we don't know that for sure, um, but there are there are there are a lot of reasons to that to that support this theory. Then Go had moved to Arles about a year before he painted this. He moved there from Paris. He had been in Paris for a couple of years. He was originally from the Netherlands, but he was in Paris trying to kind of become part of the avant-garde scene and he got um, he got tired of it. He got tired of city life. He wanted something more peaceful. He wanted the rural countryside. He wanted what he wanted a sort of utopian existence. And he had this fantasy that um, that Provence was going to be all of these things to him. And he also, as a painter, wanted to focus on country life. He wanted to paint uh, rural landscapes, he, and he wanted to paint the people of the countryside, um, the peasantry. So one of the things to think about when you're looking at this painting is how unusual it, it was for the time that Van Gogh was working to make a portrait that was just about, that, that, that featured just a regular person. Um, portraiture had for centuries traditionally been reserved for the aristocracy, for kings and queens and princes and, um, you know, sort of Im important people. And um, there had been artists before Van Gogh that kind of broke with, with that tradition, but it was still uh, a pretty new thing to, to devote a, uh, the, a canvas, to devote a portrait to just an ordinary person. Um, and a, you know, a, a, a postal worker, um, it is a, 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 a humble subject, and for Van Gogh, it was it was a proudly humble subject. His job uh, working at the post office is proudly announced on the hat. Um, and just look at the way that he's that Roulin is looking at you. He is not, you know, it's a humble subject, but um, he is certainly not shying away. He is confident. He is staring. He is meeting meeting your gaze. Um, but it's not confrontational. It's just kind of, it's kind of warm. Um, and I think that when I think about this and kind of knowing about the relationship between Van Gogh and Roulin, I think about, you can feel the, the friendship. You can feel the warmth um, in, this, in this painting. So Van Gogh always, almost always worked directly from nature. He had to either be painting right in front of the landscape or working from a model. Um, and his paintings are a very, like, really interesting, curious mix of what's observed, so a sort of realism or naturalism, and a total kind of liberty, um, inventiveness with color that is not coming directly from what's observed, that's coming more from a place of, of, um, of emotion. And so one of the naturalistic details that I that I just love about this painting, and let's let's zoom in on it a little bit. I can show you these. It's just so amazing. Look at his his mustache. Now I know it's green, but when I'm talking about the the naturalism, I'm talking about the fact that it is it hangs over his lips, that it's that it's untrimmed. Um, that he is he's not making an effort here to idealize Roulin. Also look at his facial features. Look at the nose. It's a little bit lopsided. Um, and the eyes are are really lopsided. I mean one is very noticeably lower than the other one. And I don't I don't who knows if that was really what what he looked like. Um, maybe there was a little bit of asymmetry in the eyes. Maybe he's just exaggerating it. Um, I kind of imagine that that 
um, because because of his concern with with capturing this person that that there is some truth to to the asymmetry in the eyes. Um, but then at the same time that there are these naturalistic details, I mean, look at the way that he uses color in the beard here. This is supposed to be a salt and pepper beard, and it is just composed of so many different colors, bright blues and lavenders and greens. And somehow when you're looking at it, it all adds up to a, a salt and pepper. Maybe it's because that's kind of what we're expecting. Um, but again, look at that mustache, the eyes. So Van Gogh was a spiritual person and he really admired the people of the countryside for their simplicity. He thought that this was the right way to live, for people to be closer to the earth, to live natural and simple lives. And he wrote about how um, he thought that the people of Arles, people like Joseph Roulin, were, um, they were sort of saintly. They were sort of religious figures in a way. And so when I look at this, I'm like, I'm thinking, wow, he really is making him into a sort of religious figure. Um, the painting in the way that the sitter is arranged evokes Byzantine icons. You know, that, that up close depiction, the frontality, the total frontality, he's just directly there's facing um, the artist. Um, the background, which might just be, you know, the pattern on, on the wallpaper, but it could also, it also sort of evokes this otherworldliness. Um, and then something that I, that I learned recently, which is just, which I love so much, and this comes from my colleague at the Barnes. Her name is Kaylin Jewell, and she specializes in late classical art, and she knows a lot about Byzantine art, and she told me that, you know, we're going to go back to the asymmetry of the eyes for a second. She told me that in Byzantine art, um, it's a, it's, it's a, it's something that you, you find every once in a while in, uh, in Byzantine icons, that there's a, there's an asymmetry sometimes to the eyes, especially to the icons that were being produced in Constantinople in the sixth century. Um, and the reason for that, the reason that they did that was it was for theological purposes to, uh, to give a, a sense of humanity to Christ. But I just, I think that that's really interesting. If, if he's making Roulin into a sort of religious figure, um, I mean, maybe it even goes down to that asymmetry of the eyes. Maybe that's what that asymmetry is about. Um, well, that's it for today. Thank you for listening, and I hope that you will join us again tomorrow. Mm -hmm.